Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today I'm going to teach you how to create a space background complete with a planet having a sunrise, stars and nebula clouds. So uh, a couple of assumptions that I'm making as always. The first is I am using Windows so if you're using a Mac then whenever I say hit the control key on your keyboard that means the command key on a Mac keyboard and when I say hit the alt key on a uh, on a Mac, that means the option key. So uh, the second assumption, of course, is that you're using Photoshop 2015 or later. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, then some of the effects may not work as expected. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is create a new image. So let's hit Control N on our keyboard to bring up the new image dialog box. And let's name this Space Wallpaper. Uh, I am using a uh, width of 3840 by 2160 height. Uh, resolution is 150 pixels per inch. RGB color 8 bit. The background contents don't matter. We're going to be changing it anyway. Uh, we're using Adobe RGB 1998 square pixels. So let's hit OK and we have our document beginning. Uh, now the first thing that we've got to do is make sure that our foreground and background are the default black and white. So let's hit D on our keyboard and our uh, foreground and background are now black and white. We will then fill this layer with black by hitting Alt Backspace to fill it with black and then we're going to double click on the background layer and rename it Small Stars because this will be the beginning of our stars. So to make the stars we're going to be needing to add some noise. So let's go to dis uh, Noise and add noise. We're going to make the amount 400% uh, Gaussian and monochromatic. We're going to hit OK and that's the beginning of our stars. Then we are going to create, uh, well we're going to duplicate this. Let's do that first. Let's duplicate this by hitting Control J on the keyboard to duplicate it and then let's rename the duplicate layer uh, large stars temp for temporary and click off of that. Now let's make this hidden so that we don't see large stars temp and let us make sure that small stars is selected, highlight, and visible. Then we're going to go up here to filter, we're going to go up to uh, blur, and we're going to go up to Gaussian blur. And we're going to make our Gaussian blur 1. Right, just a slight Gaussian blur. We're going to hit OK. And then uh, on the same thing, we are going to now bring up our levels so that we can change the levels. And this is what's going to give us our stars. So let's hit Control L on the keyboard to bring up levels for small stars. And you see this nice hump here in the middle. That's because most of the document is in the gray area. There's very little pure white, very little pure black. So that's why there's a big hump in the middle. And we're going to change the levels to make this uh, far more black and white. So we're going to change the levels to 190 on the left, that's the blacks. Uh, the middle number we're going to keep at 1.00 and on the right we're going to change that to 220. And as you can see we now have stars. That is the beginning of our star field. Okay, and now what we're going to do is going to make large stars temp visible. And we're going to now give this a Gaussian Blur. So we go back up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we're going to make this 4 because we want more blur. That's going to give us larger stars. Then we're going to bring up our levels again by hitting Control L on our keyboard. And you'll see that the hump is far more pronounced and much smaller in size from left to right. Uh, and we're going to change the left and the right uh, uh, sliders to 135 on the left and the right one will now be 150 and that gives us much larger stars. We can now hit OK and we have our star fields. However, we are missing the small stars. Don't worry, we're going to bring them back. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, transform the large star layer by hitting Control T on our keyboard and then we are going to right click on it and select Flip Vertical. Okay, then 
We're going to go up here to our options bar. We're going to make sure that our width and height are linked by hitting on the little link icon there. And we're going to change the width and the height to 102% so that we lose all the edge pixels that we just had showing. So then we're going to hit the check mark to accept that transformation. Uh, and then we are going to go over here to our channels palette. Now, if you don't see the channels palette, you can go up to Windows, Channels, and click on that, and you will see the channels palette. Once you see the channels palette, make sure that they're all highlighted. You don't have to touch anything up there. We're going to go down here to the very bottom to this Loads Channel as Selection button, and you're going to click on that once. And you can't see it very well, but that makes all of these stars, everything that's white, now has marching ants on it. That means that they're all selected. Black is not selected, just the white. So then we're going to go back to our layers uh, palette, and we are going to create a new layer by hitting Create New Layer icon down here at the bottom. And we're going to name the new layer as Large Stars. So let's name that Large Stars. And then we're going to fill the selection with white by hitting Control, Backspace. That filled it with white. And then we're going to deselect by hitting Control, D. And if we turn off large stars, you'll see that we have all of our large stars there. I can turn off and on the large stars. So we have our large stars. Uh, and we no longer need large stars temp. So we can delete it by dragging it down here to the trash icon. So now we've got large stars and we've got small stars. And what we're going to do, we're going to give large stars a little bit more of a, of a glow on it by giving it a layer style. So let's go down here to our layer style and we're going to go to outer glow. Okay, and well, let's reset this to default. We don't need that right now. Uh, and let's uh, give this a blend mode of normal. Uh, opacity, let's, uh, let's make that 100%. Noise is going to be zero. Color is going to be pure white. Okay, so that's FF, FF, FF. Technique is softer. The spread is going to be zero. And the size, we're going to make 25. Uh, our contour is going to be ring, double. That's this guy right here, the one that has two humps. I'm going to make it ring double. Anti-aliased is unchecked, range 50, jitter 0. And we're going to hit OK. And that makes our stars have more of a glow. Now, we can uh, press on the little arrow here to hide the effects. And then we're going to select both layers. And we are going to right click and we're going to do Convert to Smart Object. So now our stars are just one smart object, and we're going to name this Stars, because that's all that they are, is the stars. Next up, we're going to create a new layer above this smart object layer, and we're going to name this Clouds. OK, and the fir first thing that we're going to do is we're going to fill this with black by hitting Alt Backspace. Then we're going to go up here to Filter, uh, noise, not noise, sorry, render, clouds. And then we're going to redo that filter a few times by hitting Control F three times. One, two, three. That gives us a nice randomized look for the clouds. Then what we're going to do is we're going to, <clears throat> we're going to change the cloud layer mode to color dodge. So we're going to change this to color dodge. That makes it look like it's disappeared, but that's a good thing because underneath this layer, we are going to put in our color for the nebula. So let's create a new layer below uh, our clouds layer by clicking on the uh, new layer icon, then dragging the new layer that's created underneath clouds, and let's rename this as color. Okay, now you've got to be a little bit uh, more creative in what you're doing, because what I'm going to do may not be exactly the look that you're going for. 
but follow along with me if you can. You're going to uh, hit the B button on your keyboard to bring up your brush. You're then going to go to your brush palette. Make sure that you have a soft edged brush, which is the very first one here. Uh, and make sure that there is nothing selected here on your brush uh, options, brush tip shape options, except for smoothing. Uh, then you can minimize that. And we're going to make the brush roughly a thousand pixels big. There you go. So a thousand pixels in size. Then we're going to start picking colors. Now I like to use blues, uh, light blues, bright greens, yellows, purples, and bright reds and stuff like that because that makes it feel like space. So let's pick a color here. Uh, let's start with a base blue that's kind of deep. We'll go with 003CFF, but you can use any color that looks good to you. Make sure that you're on the color layer. And we're going to just start, oh, and we got to make the opacity of our brush only 10% because we don't want it to come out as a solid, big, bright, beautiful color. We want it to be very subtle to begin with. And we'll paint over the colors many times to bring out a lot of different color. So let's start up here in the upper left. We'll give it a little, little click, little click, little click, little, little bit there, you know, be, be inventive. See? There's all the blues that I need. Now let's pick another color. Let's go with a, a much lighter blue. Let's go with uh, something like this. So I've got here 64D9FF, uh, but you can, again, use any color that you want. And let's paint over a little bit here and there, make this look a little bit prettier there. That looks pretty nice. And now let's pick another color. How about, uh, how about a nice, red. Let's go with a bright, bright red, something like that. Let's go there and let's put that up there, down over there. So you just, you just have fun with it and you put it where you think it belongs. Then we're going to pick another color. I kind of like yellows in here at this point. So let's go over here for a nice yellow. Uh, that looks good. Whoop, I forgot to say what color I was using. So let's, let's look at that color again. I am using FFED29. Okay, and we'll just put in a little bit more color here, a little bit color there, and how about some purple now? Let's go with some purple. Uh, yeah, that looks nice. So we'll put in a purple, we'll put in another purple there, and a purple up there. Okay, so now we've done our colors, and again, you can do any colors that you want as long as it looks good to you. Now, still being on the color layer, Let's, uh, let's blur this slightly. Uh, you can go to uh, Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, uh, and you can give it a slight blur of about 50, if you'd like. Eh, that looks about, about good. That kind of blurs the colors a little bit, gives it a little bit more uh, saturation between the colors, so it's not a hard change from blue to red to green to yellow. Hit OK, and then we're going to change the opacity of this layer down to about 60% because we don't need it to be so big. Oh, here, let's go with 70%. 70% looks good, but anywhere around there because uh, too much of it and it looks too fake with, uh, with what we're going to be putting onto it, which next up is a planet. And the way that we make a planet is we are going to start by importing a texture into this document. So make sure that you're on your clouds layer so that the imported uh, texture will come in above our clouds. We don't want it underneath, we want it above. Uh, now I found my texture at a place called textures.com. There will be a link below in the description. Uh, and the one that I'm using, uh, I'll also have a link to that specific one, but here it is, I'll bring it in right now. It's basically rust, okay? You can use just about anything from cracked earth to sand to a brick wall to rust to scratched metal. Anything that you think might make a nice, uh, uh, a nice looking planetary surface. And it's hard to know what you're going to do uh, at first, but after a couple of experiments, you'll figure out exactly which textures will look the best. But for now, we're going to start with this rust texture. Now, as you can see in my rust texture, there seems to be a wide swath of this uh, reddish rust in the middle. I think that that would look good in the center of our planet, running from east to west rather than north to south. 
So I am going to uh, transform this by turning it around and holding down shift so that it will stay at a 90 degree angle. And that's going to give me this rust from left to right. Then to zoom out, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so that I can see the top and the bottom. Then we're going to transform it so that it's more of a square rather than a rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but more of a square is better. And then we're going to hit OK. So now we've got our texture up here. And we're going to start working on this texture and turning this into our planet. Now the way that we're going to make this planet is we're going to first cut out a circle using our elliptical marquee tool. So let's hit M on our keyboard to bring up our marquee. Uh, and you can hit Shift M until it's the circle, or you can just go up to your marquee uh, over here and just select elliptical marquee. And then holding down the Shift key on our keyboard, we're going to draw a nice big circle. I happen to like this little dot down here. So we're going to make sure that we include that in our circle. But make sure that you don't include that you only include the texture itself. You don't want to go outside of the texture. That's no good. You'll be missing half your planet. So make sure that you're within the texture. Then we are going to hit uh, Control C for copy, Control V to paste it onto a new layer. And then we can get rid of the rust layer by throwing it into the trash. And all we have left is our planet. OK, then we are going to hit uh, we're going to make sure that we're on our planet layer and we're going to name this as world. Okay, not planet, just world, because we're going to name something planet later when we're done with this. So right now we're going to name it world. And uh, I like this little circle thing here and I think I'm going to make my sun come from up here on the upper right, I think. Uh, that might look good or no, I'm going to make it come from the upper left because I'm going to put our planet I'm going to put it over here, I think. I'll put the planet. So since I want it over there and I like this circle, I'm going to transform this and I'm going to turn it around so that the circle is up here. Ah, just because I like that. All right, so you don't have to do that. I'm just doing that as an extra step. Now, uh, we're going to make sure that we have this planet, this world, selected by hitting Control and then clicking on the uh, thumbnail of the layer in our layers palette, and that will make a perfect selection around the planet. Once we have that perfect selection, we are going to spherize the planet. We're going to go to Filter, Distort, Spherize. And we're going to make the amount 100%, mode is normal, and we're going to hit OK. And that will spherize it, but it doesn't quite look spherized enough, so we're going to hit Control F again to repeat that, and now we have a sphere planet. And we can now deselect by hitting Control D, and we have a planet. Then we are going to apply a layer style to the world in order to give it an atmosphere. So we're going to go to uh, our layers styles, and we're going to go to inner glow. And we are going to make the inner glow as follows. We're going to make it uh, blend mode of screen. We're going to make the opacity 30%. Noise is going to be 0%. Color is going to be 1-6-B-A-E-F. Uh, and the technique is going to be softer. It's going to come in from the edge, not from the center. Our choke will be 0. Our size will be 70. Contour is going to be linear, which is the line here. Anti-aliased is unchecked. Range is 50. Jitter is 0. Now, for my purposes, this may not be true for you, so it's optional. For my purposes, I want a color overlay on this to make it more of a bluish kind of world. So by do, I'm going to make a soft light. I'm going to make the color here 0078FF, uh, and it's going to be opacity of 50%. Now, again, that's optional. Uh, but what isn't optional is you need to have an exterior atmosphere around the planet. So you're probably going to want to put in an outer glow. And the outer glow is going to be linear light. So let's make it linear light. Where are you? That's linear dodge. Here's linear light. Uh, opacity is going to be 30%. Uh, noise is going to be zero. And the color that we're going to use is going to be one six. C, 7, 
FA to give it a blue color. Technique is going to be softer. Spread is going to be zero. The size is going to be 101 Dalmatians. Why are you not? Oh, because I did not hit OK. Uh, size is going to be 101. OK. Uh, the contour is going to be half round, which I believe is this guy right here. Am I correct? Half round? I'm going to say I'm correct. Half round. Anti-alias is unchecked, range 50, and jitter of zero. And as you can see, we now have a nice looking atmosphere around our planet. And we're going to hit OK. So then we're going to create a new layer above the world, and that's going to give us a shadow. The shadow is going to make it look like there's sunrise coming in on one side of the planet and the rest of the planet is still in darkness. So we're going to create a new layer above this. We're going to name this layer shadow. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to control click again on world to make a selection of the world. And in shadow, we are going to make sure that shadow is uh, uh, selected, uh, and then we're going to go to select, <clears throat> excuse me, modify feather, and we're going to make the feather 100. The radius is 100. Don't and leave this unchecked. So we're going to hit OK, and that's going to feather our planet. Give it. Uh, we're going to fill that with black by hitting Alt Backspace. Whoops. We're going to first make our foreground and background uh, black and white, and then we're going to hit Alt Backspace to fill it with black. We're going to hit Control D to deselect, and then we can move the shadow to about there to show sunrise, right? That shows sunrise, roughly. But you can see it's, it's also hiding some of our space back here, which we do not want. Now, the way that we get rid of that is we're going to turn this shadow into a, uh, a layer mask. Okay, and we're going to, a uh, clipping mask, sorry. And we're going to do that by hitting Control, Alt, and G on our keyboard. And as you can see, it is now a clipping mask of the world. So we can move it around and it will only affect the world itself. It won't go anywhere else on the document. So we're going to put it right about here-ish, right? We want it right about there to make it look like there's sunrise coming in. And it's also a little harsh. You can't see any of the planet, and we want to see the planet. So we're going to change the layer um, opacity down to 90%. So let's make it 90%, and now we can see more of the planet than we did before. Okay, and now uh, we are going to select both the shadow and the world, and we're going to turn them also into a smart object by right-clicking and going Convert to Smart Object. And then we have to rename this as Planet. So now we have our planet, we've got our stars, we've got our clouds and our color. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the sunrise. Before we do, because the planet is now a smart object, and this is the reason that I made this into a smart object, now I can resize it any way I want, and the ratio of the glow and atmosphere will stay the same. If I had done it when they were still separate pieces and not a smart object, then as I made the planet smaller, because the, uh, the outer glow was set to 101, as its size, it would have stayed at 101 and it would have been huge compared to the size of the planet. But now as I transform it and make it bigger and smaller, the atmosphere stays the same. So now I can make it smaller and I can put it right about here where I wanted it. And if I want to turn it, I can turn it a little bit more. And we are ready to put in our sunrise. Okay, so above this layer, we're going to create a new layer, and we're going to name it Sunrise. We're going to fill this with black and hide everything. And then we're going to go up here to uh, Filter, Render, Lens Flare. 
Lens flare is great for creating sunrise uh, and flares. Now, because it's on black, you'll be able to position it anywhere that you want instead of putting it directly on the image itself. So what we want to do is we want to make the brightness 70% because we don't want it so harsh. Okay. Uh, and we're going to use the 35 millimeter prime, which I think gives us the best looking sunrise. Now, since our planet's on the right-hand side of our screen, we'll just put it right about here. And you click and drag on the little crosshair in there in order to move it around your, your screen like that. And we're going to want it right about here-ish, I think, right about there. Okay, that looks good. Yes, so let's hit OK. And we now have our sunrise. Now, how do you make the sunrise uh, movable anywhere that you want? It's by changing its layer uh, uh, mode to screen. And that gets rid of the black, and then you've got only the bright parts. So then we can move this wherever we like, right about here-ish, looks good. And we now have our sunrise over our planet, which now we have our space scene. Now there's a few more things that you can do to make it just a little bit cleaner and nicer. Like you see this giant piece of the flare right here. It looks like there's a hidden planet which you don't want to see. So what you do is you go here to sunrise, make sure that it's uh, selected, and you go to your create layer mask icon and you create a layer mask. Now using your brush tool, B, the same brush tool that we used before at 1,000 pixels, soft edge, you can get rid of this. But we want to make it a little bit smaller. So let's make it 500 pixels so that we don't accidentally overdo this. Uh, make sure that you've got black as your foreground color. And then you can just, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, you, you want to make this 100%, not 10%, uh, not my fault. Uh, and then you just paint away the parts that you don't want. So now we are getting rid of the extra flare out here. So all you see now is the sunrise itself. And we can get rid of these pieces back here that are hard for you to see most likely, but I can see them pretty well. And now you have no more uh, extra flares. You've only got your sunrise here. Now the other thing that we can do is we can create another layer above the sunrise layer, name it Sparkle. And using uh, star brushes, so go to B for brush, and then go to brush and choose your star brushes. And if you don't have any, you can download them from the web, or I have a uh, tutorial on how to create star brushes uh, that is linked in the description below. So let's choose a few star brushes. That's a little bit too big, so let's make it nice and small. I'd say anywhere around 100, from 75 to 200 are good sizes for the brushes. Uh, make sure that you're using white, so hit X on your keyboard to switch your black and white. And there, you've got uh, a little bit of a star there. Let's put one down there. And then let's pick a different star brush. And we'll do, uh, we'll do three or four real quick, just to give you an idea of what you can do with the star brushes. So let's close this up. Let's make this smaller. Uh, 125 sounds good. Let's make this guy bigger. We'll do that. Another brush. Uh, which one? Let's try this guy right over here. Yeah, that looks good. Let's make him smaller. Let's go with uh, 175. We'll put you down there and then even smaller, put you up there. And as you can see, now you've got a nice star, uh, bright stars twinkling in your space scene. And there we have our space wallpaper complete with a sunrise over a planet and nebula and twinkling stars. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up, like it, and leave a comment, and subscribe, because I'll be doing new tutorials every Tuesday. Thank you, and once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.